Today, we're making pot roast, which is so easy, it only takes four ingredients, and they're all right in front of me. Olive oil, wine, my favorite, beef stock, and chuck roast. So follow me, and let's turn up the easy. <laughs> Today we're making pot roast, which is an easy way to make a lot of food and not have to slave over the stove all day. And there's a lot of variations to this. Some of them are really complicated, but I wanted to break this recipe down to its purest form, its essence, if you will. You don't need all the fancy stuff. It's really quick and easy. As I mentioned in the intro, we have a little bit of olive oil here. We're gonna sear the meat. Heck, that's not even a required step. It's just something I like to do, add some nice color to it. It's a step you could even frankly skip. We also have some beef stock right here, and then wine. That's one cup of beef stock, one cup of wine. It's important to fill your wine over one glass so you can get some of it in you before it gets in the recipe. And remember, at least two glasses of wine per day greatly reduces your chance of giving a f Now with that said, we're gonna go ahead and get started on this process. We're gonna get this heated and we're gonna sear this meat on both sides. Get this hot, we have about two tablespoons of olive oil right there, get that in. Now, let's talk about seasoning while this is getting nice and hot. This chuck roast is about three pounds and it's been seasoned with salt only. I don't consider salt an ingredient. It's probably something all of you have at home, but when it comes to seasoning, you can go above and beyond. I just didn't want to have any controversial takes in this video. Oh, pepper, oh, Italian herbs and seasonings, no. So we kept it really simple, salt only, but really season it with what you like. And you can't go wrong, you really can't. But we just kept it nice and easy for this video, salt only. Have the olive oil in there, get nice and hot. And like I said, this is even a step you can skip. I like to keep this step in because searing it on both sides gives it some nice color, brings that Maillard reaction to it, and I think makes it look a whole lot better when it's actually on the plate. While I'm using chuck roast for this video, there are many other cuts that you can use available in the store. Essentially any tough cut, like a brisket would work really well here as well. Um, different types of, uh, like a top round would work, oh, maybe a little too lean, not my preferred cut. Today I'm using the chuck roast, which is one of my favorite cuts because it has a lot of flavor to it. Okay, this oil is nice and hot. Go ahead and drop this in. Press it down so it gets some good contact on there. And we're gonna let that sear for about two, three minutes per side. While this is heating, cooking, searing, I am going to preheat the oven to 300 degrees Fahrenheit so that when we're done with this step, we can cover it and get it right in the oven to cook. And the cooking time will take about 45 minutes per pound. While this is searing, go ahead and get a little bit more of that wine in you. I've had chefs tell me when it comes to cooking with wine, use what you like. If you don't like it, if you don't like to drink it, don't cook with it, right? Like I don't buy the cooking wines that are available on the shelf. That is, they're kind of salty for my taste. I buy something that I enjoy drinking. So we've been searing here for about two minutes. Let's see how it looks. Okay, so that's a little stuck, which means it's just not ready to be flipped. If it's, uh, the meat will be ready to be flipped when it really stops sticking to the bottom of the pan. We're gonna give it another few seconds here. We'll color there, flip it over. Okay, another practical step of this searing process is that once the meat is done cooking and we remove it, first of all, you can see it has some nice color there. That's gonna show up very nicely on the plate. Take a look at that, right? But now, if I wanted to add more ingredients, if I wanted to add my onions and everything else, I would do that right here, garlic and everything else, and I would let that saute for a few minutes, add a ton of additional flavor. But I'm gonna go ahead and skip that step. I'm gonna go ahead and add the wine right now, and we are just going to, de oh, hey, now. I'm gonna go ahead and deglaze the pan, get all those brown bits off the bottom. I suppose if you wanted to, you could go ahead and actually drain the olive oil here. I really don't. Um, it's just such a little bit. I don't think it makes a, such a big difference towards the total cook. Go ahead and add the rest of that in there. We will turn this off. Be some residual heat. Next up, we are going to add in our beef stock, about one cup. And then finally, let's add the meat back in. 
Now, this is also where you could add a ton of additional like Italian seasonings if you wanted to. You could add potatoes or carrots, although I wouldn't really ever suggest doing it at this step. If you were going to add that, it would be about with an hour of cooking time left. But this is going to take about two and a half, three hours to cook. All right, now we're gonna get the lid on and let it do what it do in the oven. We'll see you soon. All right, it's been three hours. Let's see how this looks. Come on in, take a look. Look at that nice color all around. We have plenty of that rich stock still in there. Now, if you want to tell if it's done or not, it really should be fork tender. So you should be able to just get your fork in there, twist it around and come off with a little delicious morsel. Look at that. I can't wait to give that a try. But before I do give this a try, I wanna do one additional step. It's the dealer's choice step. It's one I really like. I mean, certainly you can cut this or just, for, you know, it's fork tender, so you can just shred it in the bowl and then ladle it over some mashed potatoes or some noodles. But I really like a sauce that's a little bit thicker than what's in here. So I'm gonna set this aside for just a moment and I'm gonna go ahead and make a really quick gravy. It's super easy, super simple. Again, not something that you have to do, but something that I like to do here in my own kitchen. We've got some butter noodles, which are cooked over there. So in order to make this gravy, it's really simple process for me. I just get some butter. You can really use any type of fat or oil. Just get that nice and hot. While that's heating up, I do wanna mention that I did flip the chuck roast one time during the three hour cook process. Uh, just to make sure it wasn't getting too dried out on one side. So I like to flip it once. Do it more if you like. There's really no hard and fast rule. You don't have to flip it at all either. Okay, well, I'm waiting for that butter to heat. I'm just gonna go ahead and test our results right here. Go ahead and get that little bite. Oh man, that is so good. It's tender and it's so full of flavor. Look, a lot of people will just tell you beef bouillon only. Some will tell you red wine only. I love the mixture. It get the, the red wine gives it a real depth of flavor that I don't think the bouillon can achieve on its own. Um, also too much bouillon makes it a little bit too salty. So this half red wine, half bouillon mixture I find is perfect for how I like it. So now we have this butter melting. Next I'm just gonna go ahead and get some all purpose flour and just go ahead and sprinkle some in there. I really do this by eye, not by measurement, but just a little bit in there. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and mix that up. Create a little bit of a paste. There we go. Get all the lumps out of it and then get all the flour, make sure all the flour disappears. So it looks like that, as you can see. And then what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to ladle some of this uh, au jus into the pan to make our gravy. So we brought that to a boil. I'm gonna let that, I've turned off the heat and I'm going to let it cool and it will begin to thicken up. As I said at the beginning of the program, don't forget your red wine. I've had a few bottles, I mean glasses while this has been cooking and it's just a great way to enjoy your day while you cook. Also for some additional flavor in your gravy, I like to use um, some Italian seasoning like I have here, but apparently I haven't opened because it still has the protective cap on the inside. And you'll know when your gravy is done when it just sort of sticks to the spoon a little bit. Now, let's give it a little taste. It's terrific. Now, let's go ahead and build our final dish, beginning with some noodles. I like egg noodles. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this from the heat. That burner's still a little hot. Now on the pot roast, butter knife, right here. That's it, butter knife, that's how this should cut. Should be that tender, and it does. It just pulls right apart. You wanna come in here and take a look at this? Come on in, take a look at it, would you? This is super easy. Butter knife, fork tender, comes right apart. Look at that. Super simple and delicious. Get some of that on top. Little gravy after that. Finally, finish it. A little bit of parsley on top. I mean, come on, get out of here. Three hours. There's probably like five minutes of prep time in here. 
Um, and outside of the gravy and the noodles, that would have been it. I could have just pulled this out, ladled it over some mashed potatoes, and ended up with a, a delicious and healthy dinner that made my entire house smell fantastic. Give this four ingredient pot roast a try at your house. Let us know in the comments below, how do you like it? Maybe cut out the olive oil, the searing part. Now you're down to a three ingredient pot roast. Does it get any easier than that? I'll see you guys next time.